Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the second of the two utility methods that we created in the Canon game. This time we're looking at distance. Now, between get center and the distance method, this method here is much more complicated. But in the end, it's still pretty simple as long as you understand what is going on. Basically, we're going to be using the distance formula. And the distance formula is something that is quite heavily used in game design. When you start dealing with visual components and you need to check the distance between points for any reason, be it simple collisions, um, for processing effects, etc., you're going to have to use the distance formula. It's just going to pop up. So this is a great time for us to go over exactly what's taking place. Now, before we get into the code, let's spend just a moment and talk about the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to take you all the way back to early high school. So let me come over here real quick, find where my mouse is at. There we go. And I'm just going to divide the screen momentarily to make this a little bit easier. So the Pythagorean theorem, what is going on here? Let me define... This is going to be the worst looking right triangle ever. A right triangle. And it has a leg A, B, and the hypotenuse, if I can get that word out, which is the leg that's opposite of our right angle. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and add in a little bit of extra detail here. Let's pretend that what we were really looking at were some boxes. So there's a box. Here's a box. Now, these are perfect squares. They may not look like it because I'm using a Wacom, and you know how whiteboarding goes for me. But we're going to stipulate that they are indeed perfect squares. Basically, the Pythagorean theorem states that the area... So let me just go ahead and write this out. The area of A plus... The area of B is going to be equal to the area of C. Boy, somebody had a lot of time on their hands way back in the day. So what am I talking about the area? The area, you know, this whole area inside once I find my mouse because it's vanished. So I get for making it smaller. There we go. So this, here we go, the area. So the area of that guy and the area of this guy, if we add them together, this is really neat. They are going, that area is going to equal the area that's found in C right here. That's very cool. Now, with a perfect square, how do we find the area? Well, it's just, it's simply, let me come up here and draw a perfect square. That, that, that's a perfect square, right, Logan? <laughs> so let's pretend that each side was 5. Well, how do we find it? We just multiply Two of the sides. So 5 times 5 would give us the area of 25. So you could say 5 squared is the area. So the area is going to be 25. So all we got to do is just take one of the sides, square it, and we have the area. So the area of A. So what does that really mean? Well, the area of A is A squared. The area of B. Well, that's B squared. And if we add these two together... What does it equal? It equals to the area of C, C squared. Ha ha, oh, we're starting to get a formula. So let's take this guy right here and rewrite it just a little bit. We could say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. That's Pythagorean's theorem. Okay, now we can simplify this quite easily. I want to get rid of the squared on the C side so that I know what C is. Now, what does that mean I'm going to find out? Well, I'm going to find out the hypotenuse. I'm going to find out its length, basically. So we're looking at this right. Let me see if I can get a pointer. There we go. We're looking at this right here. How long is this? So if we had the length of this leg and the length of this leg, and this was a right triangle, we could find out the length of this leg. Right, Logan? That's right. That's what you just said, is we can find the area of the squares on each side, but that we can get a, or we can get any of the values from that if we get the square root of any of those values. You got it. So, to do this, watch this. All I need to do to get rid of that square is find the square root of. How cool is that? What does this mean? Well, this basically evaluates to C equals the square root of a squared plus 
B squared. As simple as that. And a, a an easy triangle to calculate would be what I like to call the three, the four, and what's this guy going to be? And a lot of you guys have already shouted out five. Well, let's prove it real quick. So A squared, well, that would be what? 16. So four squared gives us 16. Three squared gives us what? So three squared gives us nine. So nine plus 16 gives us what? 25. So if we have three and four, so this side being B being three and A being four, what does C end up being? C ends up being five. Can we prove that? Yes, we sure can. If I come over here and bring up, let's go to start, run, bring up a calculator real quick, and that's in standard mode, one second. Let's go ahead and come over here and put it into scientific mode. Now, three squared plus four squared gave us 16, right? Or I mean, 25, excuse me. So now what we need to do, because remember, that's down here, but we had the square root of 25, which is 5. So even though this is real simple, I'm just going to say we need 25, and to find the square root of that, all we need to do is come in here and do 0.5, and that is indeed, tink, 5, okay? So there's our 3, 4, 5 triangle. Very simple. Let me just minimize this, Logan, because we'll come back once we actually create something using our objects over here. So very simple activity. Let me go ahead and finish this off by just saying that C was equal to the square root. I just want them to see this, so we're just going to drive it in. Of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which was C was equal to the square root of 25, and we've proven that. Okay? Simple enough? Anything you want to add to this? No, I think that pretty much covers it. That gives the layout of the isosceles triangle that you're using and what we're actually representing, the three boxes that are joined by the isosceles triangle. Okay, so Pythagorean's theorem. Now, how can we apply that to our problem back over there of getting the distance between two different objects? Let's go ahead and delete everything here. Boom, that was quick. Take a look at this. I can define a triangle... using our coordinate system, can't I? Look at that. Right now, I have enough information to define and get these two legs. If I can get these two legs, then I can come in here and determine, let's figure out where I'm at, there we go, I can determine this leg. Well, what is this leg? This leg right here is our distance. It is the distance between object A and object B. Now, I went ahead and took a few minutes before we started this video, and I created this grid because I think it's really important that you can visualize what is actually happening with the numbers as opposed to me just throwing a bunch of numbers around without anything to visualize. So you'll notice right now that I've already got defined. Let me find where I'm at over here. There we go, way off screen. I've got an X and a Y value. Now, remember... This is X, this is Y, okay, simple grid. So the very first, or let's see, object B, that's going to be the first one we're going to come to. So 1, 2 in X, so there's our 2 in X, 1, 2 in Y, and that's how we came up with 2 in Y. Taking a look at object A, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so that's how we came up with X. And now coming up with 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You trace that across, and there you run into object A. So that is where we come up with the 7. Well, that's all very good. That defines two points in space, but that doesn't represent a triangle. And we need the right triangle for calculating the distance. But we can use some simple subtraction of one X from the other and one Y from the other to define the distance because this is what we're looking for. We really need, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, I'm going to come in here and I believe I can erase this out without destroying anything. Isn't that always a good thing? 
what we need to do is we need to convert our coordinates into, figure out where I'm at, into a distance right here. We need to know that length, the length of that leg. And we need to do the exact same thing in this direction. And it's very easy. Now, let's take a look at what's going on up here in our code. So A is going to be equal to, well, we're going to be working with point A and point B. So let me start out by defining point A's and point B. So we'll come all the way up here near the top and say point A dot X is equal to 8. Okay, this object A is going to be point A and X is 8. Point B, or I'm sorry, point A, let me stick with A. His Y is going to be equal to 7. All right, very good. Now let's move over to point B. So now we're dealing with, of course, object B. So point B dot X is equal to 2. And point B dot Y is equal to 2. All right, so now that we've got all of this defined, as a matter of fact, I'll come up here and try to keep everything separated. Now let's take a look at how our formula is working over here in the code to generate this for us. So what I want to do right now is come over here and focus on this section. So we're saying that the integer variable a is going to hold, instead of me typing out or writing out the entire thing, I'm just going to do p for point. So point a dot x minus point B dot X. All right, that's cool. Let's find out what did we have in point A dot X. Well, here's point A dot X. It was an 8. What did we have in point B dot X? It was a 2. And we're subtracting them. So what is 8 minus 2? 8 minus 2 is 6. All right, now that's A. Now what we need to do is go ahead and calculate B. So B is going to be equal to, B is equal to do, 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 point A dot Y minus, and again, just bring your attention to where I'm looking, right here. So minus point B dot Y. Once again, let's do the same thing. What's in point A dot Y? Point A dot Y contains a 7 with me looking up. And point B dot Y contains a 2 with me looking up. Very good. And we're going to subtract. So 7, 6, 5. So we're going to end up with 5. Agreed? So in the X direction, what do we have going on? Because that's going to be A. So our X direction contains 6. So let's take a look at this. So we start out right here. So one unit, two, three, four, five, ha, 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 six units over. We have just defined this leg as six. Uh-oh, we're making progress now. Now for our next leg, we've got five. This is Y. So now we're going up and down. So let's go up and down. So here we go. Starting right here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, uh-oh, what do you know? So now we have defined this guy. Oh, we are so home now. Now let's go ahead and move our intention down to here. All right, so A squared plus B squared. So what is A squared? It's A times A, right? Right, just for lack of an easy way to represent a power or exponent, one can simply multiply the value by itself. Again, looking back, if you remember back to the box you had drawn, we had five on each side. The simplest way you had shown was just to multiply one side by the other side, and then you would have side by side, in this case, just A times A. Exactly. And what is in A right now? A 6. What is in B right now? A 5. So I could come down here, and I could say that, so A squared plus B squared, so a squared plus B squared is actually 6 squared plus 5 squared. And what is this? This is 36 plus 25. 
now to find C. So now that we've taken care of everything inside, basically, as a matter of fact, we can go ahead and add this together because we are adding them. So this becomes 61. So now we've done all of this from here all the way over to here. That has been evaluated. But now we've got to do the square root part. So that's kind of been just traveling along with us this whole entire time. So we've had this. I'll draw it out over here just so that it remains accurate. Which means it followed us down. Which means it followed us down. So the square root, the answer of this right here is going to be our distance. So we could go ahead and figure that out real quick if we wanted to by coming down here and bringing up our calculator once again. And we could simply type in 61. And let's go ahead and get the square root of it. 7.81. All right, so 7.81. So this is equal, so our distance, Seven point eight one. Very nice. Now, let's try something here. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I like trying interesting things. To let's bring up. I got an idea. Go to view or window. Let's bring up our tools real quick. And let's see. This is going to look like some crazy stuff over here, but that's okay. Let me create a new layer. And inside this new layer, what I want to do is grab my line tool and we are on the new one good and I want to create a line from right here as close as I can get it anyways and draw that line up to the center of right there very nice now what I want to do is come up here to edit let's come down to transform and let's rotate it now, with it being able to be rotated, let's go ahead and rotate it to where it is straight on our grid. Did that look pretty straight to you, Logan? Oh, yeah, that's certainly straight enough to line up with any of the grid lines. All right, so let's go ahead and just accept that, and let's move this around. Let's just move it down here for good form, and let's go ahead and see what we've got. One, two, actually, I'll just let me, let me go ahead and draw here again. Just, you got to draw, right? You know me. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and look at that. Not quite to the line, 7.81. Now, of course, this isn't to perfection. I wasn't zoomed in far enough, getting the pixels right, but it did not go all the way over to eight. So our distance is going to be close to eight. The actual distance, of course, because using the mathematical formula is 7.81. And that's what's going on right here. Once we get this inner portion complete, as outlined right there, we then find the square root of it. And the square root exists within math. Now the result is a double and Logan needed to cast it over to a float because C is a float and it needed to be a float because we're returning a float. And with this method, we told it we were going to be returning a float, not a double. Now, casting is something that we're going to get into later, but we still needed to do it. And it's really as simple as you are seeing right there. So later on, when we get into this interesting lesson about taking our data types and converting them from one type to another, this is all you're going to see, right? It's, it really is, for the most part, that simple. So that is how we go about calculating distances. We turned it into, from Pythagorean's theorem, into code to handle a formula for coming up with a solution. Logan, any thoughts or anything you'd like to add? Just to say that um, the, uh, the theorem allows us to break down the problem into something more simplistic that we can handle on a number-by-number -number basis. What I mean by that is the problem is finding the distance of an arbitrarily angled line. Yep. If we just needed to find a vertical or horizontal line, that's easy because a vertical or horizontal line is only going to differ in either x or y. 
So getting the difference of either of those gives us the length. Exactly. The problem is to get a, a line that's at a weird angle, we have to factor in both x and y at the same time. You can't just do that with a value-by-value value basis. However, if you draw out, if you connect those uh, points by using a, call it leg A and leg B of right. an isosceles triangle, you can then calculate the third leg, or C, using uh, the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So basically what he's saying is right here, by using where they're at in space, we can basically subtract their x's, we can subtract their y's, and we can come up with these legs. Once we've got the legs, then all we've got to do is use Pythagorean's theorem right there to get that final leg, the hypotenuse, which is going to give us our distance between the two objects, and that is our goal here, okay? So with that, that is going to wrap up this video. If you're still a little bit confused, let it sink in for half an hour. Watch the video again. Play with a few of these triangles. Pull out a calculator, come up with some numbers, and come up with a result. That result will always indicate the distance between these two outer points, okay? And with that, once again, that wraps up this video. Thanks a lot, guys.